Welcome to Milwaukee, where we start an especially big Monday with a showdown between a Marquette team out to prove they're an elite Big E squad and the up and down Louisville Cardinals. Big Monday is presented by Bud Light. One year and one day ago, Louisville and Marquette squared off in Kentucky. And the result, one of the great comebacks in conference history. Knowles catches, shoots. Got it! Knowles with a long one. Here he is to catch and fire. Yes! Wow! Here's Knowles. Knowles. Nice pass. What a gift. Jared lays it in. And how about that? Louisville wins it, 71 to 70. What a remarkable come from behind win today. And we're hoping for just as much drama today as we begin an even bigger Big Monday than usual. A grand slam of college basketball. Four games, six ranked teams, two of the nation's three remaining unbeatens, all lined up on ESPN. Coming up next, number five, Missouri will host Texas A&M, followed by the top team in the nation, Syracuse taking on Pittsburgh, and then the nightcap, undefeated Baylor with a huge test from number seven, Kansas. But we begin with two top 25 teams in the Big East, Marquette and Louisville, Bob Wischusen and Len Elmore. When you think about where these two teams are now, the roller coaster that the start of the Big East season has been for both, it's a very important game. It certainly is, and for both of these teams, they're missing some things and critical elements of their attack. When you take a look at Louisville, their offense heading south, they really need to get uh, more guys involved. They need a bigger punch offensively. It's got to be more than just Russ Smith. And the loss of Kyle Cork, their leading scorer, certainly won't help as he'll miss his second consecutive game. And we look at Marquette, without their big man in the middle, Chris O'Toole, they've become kind of a horizontal defensive team. They've got to plug some defensive holes. And you mentioned no Kyle Keurig today for Louisville. That means you would have to think that Gorgie Jang has to be even more of a front court factor for the Cardinals. Yeah, he's going to have to provide that punch that we talked about, particularly in the paint, where he's got a size advantage. And for Marquette, Darius Johnson Odom has been in double figures in all 17 games that he's played in this year. Yeah, I mean, he's got some help, though. Jay Crowder's a guy who can do just about everything. Marquette has won two in a row after going through a stretch where they lost four of six. Louisville comes into today having lost four of six. So both teams trying to stay on track in the Big East race early on. And Marquette coming off of the latest loss to the Pitt Panthers that teams this year in the Big East just keep on delivering to Pittsburgh. The little floater comes up short for Russ Smith. And we've got the first foul of the game and it's going to go against Louisville. And it will go against Jay. Well, one of the things Rick Pitino told us before this game is that a key for him would be to keep Marquette off the free throw line. The last two games they've played, and Marquette took a significant advantage in free throw attempts. Take a look at Louisville in their 2-3 zone. That zone will morph into a man-to-man. -man. Uh, they'll change on the fly. The zone backs off of Johnson Odom, though, but he can't hit the jumper. Jang in the post. That's where he's got the advantage, but look how far out he's been pushed by Gardner. Out of the double team, sets up a wide open Chris Smith for the game's first points. Yeah, if Marquette's going to sag, Louisville's got to be able to move the ball. We talked about getting more guys involved. One way to do it, obviously, is to keep kicking that ball around until you find the open man. Under Blue drives it. Another three on the way. This one way off the mark for Kadugan, but an offensive rebound tracked down by Crowder. And a fresh 35 for Marquette. Crowder will try a three. In and out. Offensive rebound knocked out of bounds. Shane Bahannon couldn't handle it for Louisville, and Buzz Williams in his fourth year 
at Marquette, and they had to go through kind of a roller coaster ride during last offseason just to keep him with a lot of the jobs that came available in the Big 12, which is kind of his area of the country, including Texas A&M. And a reach-in foul on Crowder on the bust out by Louisville. So that's Crowder's first. But Buzz Williams has done a terrific job here at Marquette. Yeah, he's a guy that's a hot commodity right now. People recognize his attention to detail. Gets the most out of his guys. This is just his fourth season in Marquette. But he's done a terrific job winning 83 games overall. They've won 22 games at least in his first three years. And went to the Sweet 16 last year as an 11 seed. Nice. Jang rolls to the goal and scores. Russ Smith with a nice find. And it's 5-0 Cardinals. Yeah, Russ Smith with his inconsistent but certainly sometimes outstanding success. He's a focal point of that Marquette defense. And if he can make other guys better with passes like that, Louisville's offense will probably perk up a little bit. we we'll take a look again at Smith. Everybody points towards him. You see Gardner step up. And that frees Jang. As Gardner had no idea of where Jang was on the roll. Crowder has it knocked away by Siva, but it stays with Marquette. Crowd reacting as Siva ended up in the front row. Boy, he didn't buy popcorn or drinks for him? Well, he, he ended up in the lap of an elderly Marquette fan. A little floater off the rim again for Vander Blue. With Delone Bahannon. Good comes up short. Good penetrating kick by Russ Smith. Again, trying to make other guys better, trying to get other guys started. Gardner catches it low. And finally, Marquette is on the board. That's a tough shot. I'm not sure Gardner really wanted to go behind the basket to shoot that. But a nice deft touch by the big fella. Shot clock down to 10 for Louisville. Chang is double teamed. Needs an outlet. Finds it with Russ Smith. Smith has to force the issue, picks up his dribble, shot clock at four. The fadeaway won't go, and a good defensive sequence for Marquette. Yeah, it was outstanding. Everybody stayed at home, played their men, provided help. The Dugan, back court, a backdoor feed and a bullet the Blue couldn't handle. Here comes Siva in transition. That was a good job by Marquette in getting back. Siva certainly wanted the transition points. Siva to the corner, wide open jumper, no good for Chris Smith. Offensive rebound by Hannon, that's no good. Tip to the corner with Chris Smith again. Back outside to Russ Smith. That triple is knocked down, and Louisville creating with hustle extra opportunities. They've got a six-point lead. Devontae Gardner leans in, no good. Rebound by Hannon. Boy, what an obstacle Jang presents with his length and timing. You know, he's in Devontae Gardner's head. Siva down the lane with English off the window, and it's 10-2 Louisville. Johnson Odom, just a little too strong. Again, it's one and done for Marquette. Three in transition. That bottoms out. Chris Smith hits another triple and a timeout called by Buzz Williams. What a start for Louisville. Well, we talked about Louisville needing more guys involved. They've been getting a balance. We'll step aside for 30 seconds and come right back to Milwaukee. Bob Oshusen, Len Elmore back on MLK Day here in Milwaukee. An 11 point lead for Louisville. And Glenn Elmore, everyone getting into the act for the Cardinals. Yeah, we spoke about it earlier in our one-on-one. -on -one. Talked about the idea of getting more people involved. Peyton Seaver right there just wins his way through the Marquette defense and does a nice job. He even criticized earlier this year about uh, sometimes poor judgment. A lot of it had to do with him just trying to do too much. But that was a perfect opportunity. Out of the timeout, Kadugan pulls the string just a bit. A wide open lane 
and he couldn't hit. In transition the other way, and another transition three. This one for Russ Smith, and off the timeout for Marquette, it gets worse. Well, Louisville pushing the ball nicely, trying to score points in transition, get advantage breaks. We talked about the difficulty they've had scoring of late. No such problem today. That looked like a foul right there. Either that or a blocked shot. And Jamil Wilson with his shot maybe deflected as Louisville gets the benefit of no whistle. Yeah, it looked like Jane got him on the arm. The Hannon to the corner. It's a wide open two. And another for Chris Smith. A 16-point lead for Louisville. We talked about a lot of guys getting involved. Louisville just popping that ball around, finding the open man in a catch-and-suit situation or on penetration. Reach-in foul called on Louisville. It looked like Russ Smith got his hand in on Darius Johnson Odom, but what a start for the Cardinals. Yeah, it's all about moving the ball, finding the open man. And Louisville, you know, this season, an up and down from beyond the arc. But today, they are knocking it down. So listen up, Ford F-150 was just named Motor Trend's 2012 Truck of the Year. Know why? Well, here's your lesson of the day, pal. It's all in the name, Motor Trend. See, the Ford F-150 is the only truck out there with EcoBoost, which is a powerful motor that also delivers on the trend of excellent gas mileage. Got it? It's Truck of the Year 101, baby. Class dismissed. This is the future. This is the Ford F-150. The next available claims representative will be with you in 97 minutes. <laughs> and if you've got cut rate insurance, there's nothing you can do about this. So get Allstate. The only insurance company that guarantees your claim experience won't be mayhem. Like me. Introducing the Claim Satisfaction Guarantee. Only from Allstate. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. This is a key. It's a family tree. It's a pair of wings. It's a secret handshake. And a ticket to anywhere in the world. It's more than a uniform. It's the door to a world most people only dream of. There's strong, and then there's army strong. Try it on at GoArmy.com. Winter X Games Aspen, January 26th through 29th on ESPN and ABC. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And in part by Reese's, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter. They've had some big men that know how to play basketball here in the last... Well, you're not going to see his jersey up there. There's Bob Lanier and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but it's just as good to sit next to him here at the table. Riding through downtown Milwaukee, I'll tell you, it's like going down memory lane with Len Elmore. Oh, yeah. I had, a, I had a good time here the year I played for the Milwaukee Bucks. Terrific team. Bob Lanier, Marcus Johnson, Sidney Moncrief. You know, just had a overflow of outstanding talent. I was just one of the supporting cast. 60-game wins. That's how people remember you. you yes, know? well, we'll have some still photos in the second half, I think, of Paul McKeskey and Randy Brewer. <laughs> so we'll keep it going. But you can see Louisville sharing the basketball with six assists on seven made buckets. And there is an assist for Marquette as DJ O goes back door. And Marquette averages about 77 points a game, second highest scoring team in the Big East. So you have to figure at some point there's going to be a comeback that's going to arrive. But... A little sloppy here as it's saved by Jamil Wilson. And that comeback's going to have to be keyed by the defense. Marquette right now, 2 of 10 from the field. Louisville not doing anything special, just a 2-3 zone. And there's a more aggressive attack by Marquette. Darius Johnson Odom averages 2.13s made per game in the top six in the Big East. Back-to-back -back buckets by Johnson Odom. A little space created, and another knockdown jumper by Russ Smith. 
Boy, you talk about an explosive scorer. I mean, he's had moments where he couldn't find the basket, particularly from beyond the arc. But there have been other times when he's been unstoppable. 25 points against the ball. That three bottoms out for Todd Mayo. Marquette now finding the range. I think during that timeout, I'm sure Buzz Williams talked about being more aggressive, looking for your shots instead of spending too much time trying to explore that 2-3 zone. The Hannon left alone. Comes up a little short. Rebound to Crowder. The hit ahead. Todd Mayo pulls up. That might have been a little too aggressive right now. There's nobody to cover the board for Marquette. And a timeout called by Rick Pitino. So it's a 10-point lead for Louisville. And a reminder, Big Monday will continue with a doubleheader nightcap. First at 7.30, Pittsburgh will try and take out the top-ranked undefeated Syracuse Orange. And then the day wraps up with another undefeated team, Baylor, meeting the Kansas Jayhawks. Both games available at ESPN3, streaming live. Watch ESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app as we take a look at the early goings-on in the Big East. And there's Syracuse. Certainly, I would say, Len, far and away the best and deepest team, but some surprising teams like Cincinnati and Seton Hall in the top four. Yeah, I mean, you talk about, again, the changing of the guard, so to speak. Both of those programs on the upswing. But you saw in the record, you see how important it is to win at home. Rick Pitino with a couple of home losses, you know, wants his team to be able to win the rest of the games at home and steal a couple on the road to get to that 10-win mark, which I think he believes is the mark that's going to get you a bye in the Big East tournament. Siva steps into a three. Almost turning it over in the backcourt was Vander Blue. Now Crowder lobs one to Johnson Odom and it's pinned against the backboard by Jang. Yeah, Jang unbelievable in his timing and recognition that time and with his length and that timing that I spoke of, that's why he leaves the Big East and block shots. Siva penetrates, lost the dribble, got it back. They call it a double dribble. So I guess he didn't get it back. Still a 10-point lead for Louisville as we approach the midway point of the first half. Well, Darius Johnson Odom, leading scorer for Marquette and second leading scorer in the Big East, starting to find the range. And defensively, though, for Louisville, Gorgi Dieng getting it done. Great start for Louisville, but Marquette has cut into the lead somewhat as we begin a big Monday presented by Bud Light from here in Milwaukee, 20 to 10. Louisville is on top, and both of these teams playing without very important pieces to their puzzle. Now, for Louisville, Kyle Kurek out for the second consecutive game with a high ankle sprain. He obviously will return, but the same cannot be said for Marquette center Chris Latule as he is out for the season already with a torn ACL in his left knee. And Len, talking to Buzz Williams earlier today, he went on and on about how much it changes their team yep. and how much it changes just the way they play and the roles for the guys in their front court without Atula. Yeah, I mean, defensively, it certainly forces Marquette, as I said, to be a horizontal defensive team, looking to double team, steal the ball. They don't have the big fell in the middle to block shots. And on the offensive end, Chris Otula just averaged about five points, but he sets screens, he seals people off, makes it easier to get points in the paint. Johnson Odom ends up with the loose ball on his own miss, and just checking into the game was Rakeem Buckles, and immediately called for his first foul. So third team foul against Louisville is coming back on his junior Cadugan. He'll replace Vander Blue. And another player that you could tell Buzz Williams loves to talk about is Junior Cadugan. Yeah, Junior Cadugan is a guy that kind of makes his team run better than two to one assist turnover ratio. Although a turnover here, a takeaway by Smith with the jump step, the left hand, it rolls off. It will stay with Louisville though. Well, some would say Russ Smith never met a shot he didn't like. <laughs> and scoring 25 points in their last game against DePaul, Rick Pitino said it was like Russ Smith out there with four guys on the playground. Although he did get some help 
from Chris Smith. So the Smith brothers, not cough drops, but maybe three-point drops or something. And right now, they're the two leading scorers for Louisville as well. Now, if you want to talk about a turnaround, Russ Smith last year, 2.2 points per game. Struggled to learn the system, dealt with injuries off and on all last year. Considered transferring, but decided to stay at Louisville, and now he averages over 12 points a game. And he has keyed their offense here in the first half against Marquette. Yeah, he can be an explosive scorer, given the opportunity. There are times, though, when he can't find the range. So he's just got to develop consistency. Kevin Ware turns it over. Crowder has it blocked from behind by Ware, but the follow-up by Mayo. And now a foul underneath on Bahannon, trying to post up Jamil Wilson. Well, you don't want it to rain turnovers if you're Louisville. You know, there's a steal by Jay Crowder. And good follow by Mayo. Only three blue shirts back on that one. Marquette opened the game down 16 to 2. Turning things around now as we're past the midway point of the first half. Dugan down the lane, lays one off. The floater won't go for Gardner. He'll try again. That won't go. How about one more time? And he draws the foul. Well, now you see why Buzz Williams sings the praises of Junior Kadugan. You know, he's the guy that leads the more aggressive attack here on the penetration, finds the big fella. And if at first you don't succeed, try again with that big body. You can command the post. Shane Bahannon called for the foul. That's his first. So Devontae Gardner, who for a big guy, is an extremely good free throw shooter. 77% at the line, which puts him in the top 10 in the Big East. And he is the guy that has seen the most minutes increased since Atule went down. As he has started eight of the 10 games since Atule was injured. And he's averaging over 11 points and about seven rebounds a game as a starter. Well, he's a wide body that's still learning how to play in the post. Still learning how to drop step and seal. And with that body, that's what you want to learn first thing to make you more effective. He's a wide body that used to be wider. <laughs> he weighs 290. He's actually lost 30 pounds since coming to Marquette. Only a sophomore. And Gardner will now take a seat. Under Blue comes back on for Marquette. It's a 12-2 run for the Golden Eagles, and they've got the lead down to six. And now Buckles limps off for, for Louisville. So that's a team already that has been bitten by the injury bug all season long. Well, you can see that brace on his left leg. He tore his ACL last year. Missed eight games even coming into this year as he tried to rehab it. So a little bit of cause for concern as the trainers are taking a look at it. So Jared Swapshire on for the first time. Swapshire with a floater. Comes up short. And over the back goes Jank. That'll be his second. What a block out by Jay Crowder. You know, we talk about Jay Crowder doing a lot of things. With Otule out, he becomes an undersized power forward. And look at the block out on Jang. He just does a terrific job of getting his body between Jang and the ball and holds the block out. Now, Gorgie Jang, of course, is only a sophomore as well from Senegal. Grew up playing soccer. He's got two fouls. And this might be a time where you think Rick Pitino might either take him out of the game or at least be a little wary about an inexperienced player knowing how to play with two fouls. You surprised he's staying in? Um, I don't know. Rick may have more confidence in him than we certainly believe. You know, despite the inexperience, he's out there playing relatively aggressively. And I, then he I grabs think, the rebound. Yeah, and I, I think that this is the time when you do learn how to play when you're in foul trouble. You know, Louisville offense, as efficient as it was before, the last three minutes and 50-some-odd seconds, you know, they're 0 for 4 from the field and turn the ball over. After having six assists on their first seven made field goals, Chris Smith. No good. Offensive rebound and a foul called on Swapshot. Another foul at the offensive end for Louisville. That's Swapshire's first. Marquette going to the line, and as I mentioned earlier, one of Rick Pitino's concerns 
was putting Marquette on the line all too often. Significant advantage from the free throw line the last two times these teams played. 17 foul for Louisville, so that'll make it a one and one opportunity for Junior Cadugan. Cadugan fifth in the Big East at about five and a half assists per game. And Buzz Williams telling us earlier today that what he's most impressed about with Cadugan is not just that he delivers the ball on time to the right place, but that he's smart enough to deliver the ball on time to the right place to maybe a big man like yourself, knowing that it's a spot on the floor that most accentuates the skill set of the player he's getting it to. Oh, there's no question about it. Again, he makes other guys better. And here's the pressure from Marquette. The one, two, two zone press. And they really look to trap you in the short corners at half court. And this is what makes teams scramble. You got the smaller team, but they get out and play, as I said, horizontally. But they also give up threes because of the penetration that that kind of pressure allows. Great penetration by Siva to set up Smith. Oh, that was a foul. No Muscling ball. his way inside, though, Jay Crowder. Should have been an end one. Yeah, and Jane would have picked up his third, too. They're pretty fortunate. Swooping the other way, though, is Russ Smith with the answer. And Louisville pushes back to a seven-point lead. Straight away three on the way. Off the mark for Jamil Wilson. Here comes Russ Smith. Lockshire, a floater, comes up short, kept it alive. Mayo runs it down. Swapshire's getting there, he just can't finish. Kadugan kicks it to the corner. Johnson Odom leaves one off for Wilson, and he's fouled. Jamil Wilson will shoot a pair when we come back. It was a 16-point lead at one point for Louisville. Buzz Williams' team has it down to seven. Abba and Len Elmore back for the first of a quadruple header beginning a long big Monday here on ESPN. And the Smiths have gotten the job done so far for Louisville. Well, they certainly have. And again, it's all about the spot up, the ability to knock down the three. Chris Smith, 20 points against the Paul. Russ Smith, 25 versus the Paul. Between those guys, 45 of Louisville's 76 points came from the Smith brothers. And they're trying to repeat the act today. Well, the two Smiths have more points than Marquette has as a team. They've got 21, and Marquette has 18. But it's Jamil Wilson at the free throw line to shoot a pair. This is Wilson's first season at Marquette. He originally signed with Oregon. He's a Wisconsin native, but he wasn't in the rotation. Ernie Kent got fired, so he decided to transfer home. And Marquette made the most sense, so only a sophomore still with three years of eligibility left. And again, without Chris Atule, he's getting a lot of playing time. Yeah, I mean, he's got good size. Obviously, he has to learn the subtleties of playing defense out here for Marquette. Nice touch as well. Marquette's bench with seven points. Terrible shooting start for the Golden Eagles, but... They're down by five, and now they create the turnover. Yeah, the quickness in, in that pressure, the, the guys that they have out there really understand how to take the spots away from them. Todd Mayo turns it over. We just showed how poorly Marquette is shooting from the field, but that was something that Rick Patino talked about with you before the game, I know, as a key, that don't let the shooting percentages for Marquette fool you. Last year, Marquette beat Louisville in one of the two games that they played against one another, and they shot, I think, below 35% in both of the meet. Yeah, but they use the free throw line to make up the, the difference. And even today, they're 4-4 four four from free throw line. Or actually, 6-6, six and six, as Wilson made his. And Louisville hasn't gotten to the line yet. Smith draws the foul. Jamil Wilson bumped him. Only Marquette's second team foul. Well, you take a look today. Marquette having a lot of trouble finding the range. The 2-3 zone, the extended 2-3 zone, a little certainly bothered them. 
But the way they've gotten back here within five is to be more aggressive. You know, try to beat the gaps, move the ball around, and they've been able to knock down some threes. Tough shot by <laughs> Russ Smith. And the rebound ends up with Mayo. We told you Russ Smith is a volume scorer. The kind of guy, he'll put up enough shots, and at some point in time, he gets really hot. Johnson Odom has his cross court pass deflected. Well, he Russ Smith. He Western Union that one. A little Euro step crossover and draws the foul. A block called on Mayo that'll put Russ Smith at the free throw line. Well, it all began with Darius Johnson Odom telegraphing his pass in the active zone. They just got their hands up, created the deflection, and as we mentioned, Russ Smith was a one man wrecking crew. First free throws of the first half for Louisville. And Russ Smith, normally a pretty dependable free throw shooter at 74%, can't hit, but he's been in double figures now. Nine of the last 11 games for Louisville. And we talked about his ability to really explode for points prior to the 25 point game with DePaul, which is their last game. He had two consecutive games where he started single digits. But that's not going to stop a, a guy like him. He's still going to go to the basket strong. He's still going to look for a shot. The Dugan lowers his Ooh. shoulder. And an offensive foul call. Carl Hess called Kadugan for exactly that. Well, Kadugan sometimes, you're not going to go around guys. He's got the kind of body that he maybe looked to go through guys. Well, I'm not so sure about that one. Wow. Not a whole lot of contact. But again, you can play guys closely, and you can afford maybe if they're going to put it on the floor and try to beat you when you have Gorgie Jang back there to erase the mistakes. Three straight turnovers for Marquette. And again, you see Marquette poised for the trap as soon as you step over the half-court line. Nice job of reversing the ball by Louisville. Hayton Siva has it, shot clock at 10. Russ Smith now resets, and he'll launch a three. Wow. Off the mark, wow. long rebound to Chris Smith. Lays it underneath for Jang. Beautiful feed from Chris Smith. Yeah, Russ Smith not shy, boy. Neither is Johnson Odom. And he hits a triple. Well, he's the second leading scorer in the Big East. And he's another guy who he can be extraordinarily explosive if he finds the range. And that's something Louisville has to be very careful of. Siva to the corner. Chris Smith, a long two, way short. Long rebound to Johnson Odom. Marquette on the break. Johnson Odom feeds one back door, and Jane got a piece again as Jamil Wilson couldn't stuff it home. And now a kick called on Mayo. Boy, tremendous length by Gorgie Jane. Tomorrow night on ESPN, it's a Super Tuesday with two great matchups. First at 7 Eastern, an in-state rivalry game. Michigan State in Michigan. And then at 9, we head to the SEC. Arkansas takes on Kentucky. Both games available, ESPN 3 and streaming live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. That is a great Super Tuesday doubleheader tomorrow night. Well, the shot blocker has been replaced for Louisville, at least for the time being. Gorgie Jang is on the bench. He's replaced by Zach Price. Didn't pick up that third foul either. And still able to block a couple of shots, be a presence inside. The behind-the-back dribble by Russ Smith, and he is on fire here in the first half. 13 for Russ Smith. Again, a very explosive score right there. Call him the volume scorer because he puts up enough. But he gets on a streak and becomes unstoppable. They have a long three. It's good. Russ Smith the other way. He'll try another three. A heat check. No good. Twice the offensive rebound. Russ Smith. Tough bounce pass. Finds Chris Smith. In and out. The rebound to Gardner. Well, don't you just hate those that hit every piece of the rim and don't go in? Gardner floats one down the lane, and that's good. 
The lead's down to two. Russ Smith with a floater off the top of the backboard. A chance for Marquette now to tie or take the lead. Well, if you're Rick Pitino, what do you do? You got a guy like Russ Smith who can be explosive, carry the team in a number of games, particularly last game, 25 against the Paul. But you got to live with shots like that, I guess. Gardner draws the foul, and he'll have a chance when he goes to the line to tie the game. It was 18 to 2 Louisville to start. Marquette with a chance to tie when we come back. Well, Carl here in Milwaukee, they're just trying to turn the page. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. They're cheering on their Golden Eagles because they're Packers. It didn't go so well yesterday afternoon, and it has gone much better as the first half has gone on for Darius Johnson Odom. Yeah, Marquette's got back into this game by playing stout defense, creates some transition opportunities, but really by shooting the three. They began 0-3 from beyond the arc since then, 4-6. In the first half of runs, Louisville, that was our score to begin the game, 18 to 2. As Louisville scored 20 points in the first 7 minutes and 15 seconds, but in the last 10 minutes and 18 seconds, they've only scored 10 points. Yeah, and it's also been about Marquette's bench, particularly Todd Mayo, who's come off the bench three or four from the field, including perfect from beyond the arc at two of two. He really got them started. Bench scoring right now, 10-0 in favor of Marquette. And Devontae Gardner with a chance to tie the game and completely erase what was a 16-point lead for Louisville right out of the gate. And we are tied. Jay Crowder comes back on, replacing Gardner. Siva turns it over, as his pocket picked by Derek Wilson. Johnson Odom sets up Crowder. Left all alone for three, a little too strong by Nunez. Odom thought about a three instead pops one for two and Marquette has their first lead with a minute and a half to go here in the first half but that was excellent patience against that Louisville 2-3 and Johnson Odom with that two dribble pull up got himself into a gap and found the ring another turnover for Louisville a miscommunication from Angel Nunez and Russ Smith Louisville's got to be careful now the guys out there, particularly Nunez, starting to lose their cool a little bit. Gardner back on as Wilson sits down for Marquette. A 9-0 run for Marquette has them on top for the first time. Plenty of time out there for Louisville to kind of regain their stature, but you can't do it when you start getting upset on the miscommunication. You've got to maintain your poise. Johnson Odom curls down the lane. Off-balance shot. Mayo tries to keep it alive and loses it to Chris Smith. Step back three by Nunez. Gardner down low. The officials are letting him play. Another case of contact on the shot. Jay it's Crowder. an 11-0 run. Jay Crowder with an upper body strength. Louisville really now has to find the hot hand once again, as they did. They went on a stretch 
where it was Russ Smith and Chris Smith carrying him. And those guys haven't really touched the ball in the last several possessions. Siva lost the dribble, goes on the deck, keeps it alive to Swapchar to the corner. It's Russ Smith, five to shoot, leans in, blocked from behind by Johnson Odom. Here comes Kadugan. Can't lay it in. And it stays with Marquette. Yeah, Swapchar went after the rebound and made contact with Nunez, but Nunez was standing out of bounds. It was 18 to 2 Louisville in the opening sequence of the game. What a turnaround we've had here in the first half is now Cardinals can't buy a basket. It's 32 to 12 Marquette since then. And here's where they have to exercise some leadership, particularly on the defensive end. Kadugan bounces it in. Crowder from the wing. And that's a good job right there, trying to demonstrate you got a challenge shot going into the locker room. That's what they're going to talk about. What a turnaround for Marquette. One for nine through the first six minutes, and they close out the first half at about 50% shooting. Trailing 18 to two, six minutes in, and they have a lead at halftime of four. Terrific first half, though, as Big Monday gets off to a flying start from Milwaukee. Now it's time for Carl Ravitch with Hubert Davis and Digger Phelps in the studio. It's the UPS Halftime Report. Welcome back to Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. Bob Schusen and Len Elmore here in Milwaukee. What a turnaround we have. The opening half between Louisville and Marquette. Louisville starts the game 18-2, six minutes in. It's a four-point lead for Marquette at halftime. So was it that disparate between the two teams in those two time segments? Well, I'll tell you what, the numbers don't lie. And it looked as though Louisville had the bus warmed up, ready to run Marquette out of this gym. <laughs> as they built themselves a 16-point lead, a little less than 14 minutes left in the game. Stout defense and the Smith boys getting it done. But somehow Marquette flips the switch, and they find the range, particularly from beyond the arc. Four of ten, and then they penetrated that two-three zone, did a nice job powering the ball in the basket, and ultimately take the lead. So two different teams for Marquette here in the first half. And two different stories in terms of the offensive balance as well. For Louisville, it was really a two-man show. Yeah, and that's the way it was the last game they played when they played the ball. As we mentioned, Louisville's got to get more guys involved. And Marquette finished that half on a flourish. As they determined themselves, they were going to find the range there and attack aggressively. And it worked out well so far. Darius Johnson Odom had 10 in the first half. Devontae Gardner. And Todd Mayo, eight apiece. Crowder chipped in with four. So a more balanced offensively for Marquette. Vander Blue has his pocket picked, though, to start off the second half by Russ Smith. Chris Smith with the left hand. No good. The follow blocked. Bahannon tries again and lays it in. Well, once again, good defense by Louisville. Kind of the way they started, extending that 2-3 zone. Forcing some bad passes, getting some deflection. Gardner across the lane, muscles it up. And it's out of bounds. And it will stay with Marquette. Looked like Vander Blue may have gotten a piece last before it went out. But with nine on the shot clock, it stays with the Golden Eagles. You know, when that ball goes inside to Devontae Gardner, he's got to exercise some patience, wait until the traffic clears, and then power up. With his size and his width, he's got an advantage on the basket against James. Kadugan tries a three with the shot clock at four, and Bahannon with another rebound. Foul called against Marquette, away from the ball, and that will go against Cadugan. Held Smith coming through the lane, that's his second. Peyton Siva had a very quiet first half in terms of scoring. Did have four assists, and now a turnover by Bahannon. And a foul by Siva. 
That's Seba's second. Well, both teams come out in the second half a little tentative with their passing. You know, you'd like to see a little more crisp passing. They've had a whole half now to solve the defense. Gardner again in the post against Jeng. The double team comes, spins baseline, finds a wide open blue. Vander Blue knocks down the jumper. Good find by Devontae Gardner. Yeah, once Devontae Gardner gets it inside, you see the Louisville defense start to collapse. And he exercised good patience to see where the open man was. Didn't rush. First field goal for Vander Blue, who averages over eight points a game. Mahanen spun towards the lane and turns it over. Blue gives it up. Johnson Odom finishes. Largest lead for Marquette, up to six. We look at Buzz Williams out there telling his team to amp it up defensively. I don't know how much higher they can go right now. Getting in the passing lanes, creating deflections, and once again, getting out in transition. Hannon with a nice head fake, spins in and scores. That time he looked like a McDonald's All-American, which he was. I'll tell you what, he's got some mobility. Kind of fools you with that big body. Johnson Odom knocks it down. Siva bumped by Gardner. A long way from the basket. Well, again, that's so important is Devontae Gardner against the zone. You're going to take a look at him right here, and he is surrounded by three and even four black shirts. But what he does is he identifies the open man right there who gets an opportunity to knock down the shot as the defense collapses. Foul on Gardner was his first. Second on Marquette here in the second half. Nice job by Jay Crowder to fight for position against Bohannon. Get the steal. Johnson Odom fades away. That's too strong. But once again, Marquette using their quick feet to get good position, creating deflection, but they're missing guys right here. And Bohannon beats them down floor, and Siva with a nice find. Five assists now for Peyton Siva. Dugan left alone and finds Crowder still underneath the basket by himself. Louisville so slow in recovering after the second pass. They overload the defense, but they don't get back and recover. Rick Pitino is not happy with how his defense sagged back and still lost track of Crowder. He calls timeout. With Len Elmore, I'm Bob Wischusen, kicking off a quadruple header here on Big Monday. And Len Elmore takes us inside the play. Well, this has got to be the reason Rick Pitino called a timeout. Watch Jay Crowder get himself in the paint. Chris Smith is supposed to be guarding him. Now, right here, watch Crowder shed him. He starts to play this guy instead of staying with the guy in the paint. Crowder just pushes him off. Smith obliges, and Crowder gets an easy layup. And that's the cause for the timeout. I think Rick Pitino is trying to figure out how do you leave a guy in the paint wide open like that? Just indicative of the breakdown defensively that Louisville is suffering. Chris Smith off the mark from three. The long rebound ends up with Kadugan and a foul called on Russ Smith. will step aside. Marquette with their largest lead at six early here in the second half. Martin Luther King Day, we remember Dr. King, and earlier this month, Marquette did just that when they took the trip to Georgetown. The Golden Eagles took a visit to the Martin Luther King Memorial, located on the National Mall. A memorial opened last fall after years of planning. Dr. King, the first African-American honored with a monument on or close to the mall, and the visit is something that the players said they will always remember. 
Well, it's so heartening to see them get a taste of history. I mean, obviously they weren't born, and maybe many of their parents weren't even born when Dr. King was that drum major for righteousness. You know, if you don't understand your history, you don't know where your future is going to be. Kind of paraphrase the, the adage. It's great to see these kids get a glimpse. Off the timeout, Louisville again sags defensively and leaves Johnson Odom wide open from three. And this extends their largest lead up to nine. That's 17 now for Darius Johnson Odom. And as I said at the end of the half, leadership is what Louisville needs now on both ends of the floor. Somebody's got to go out there and challenge shots and kind of show the way. Mahanen tries to throw it down and gets fouled. Mahanen has scored all of Louisville's points so far here in the second half. Well, again, you're going to take a look. Nice drive right there to kick, and no one even near. Look at the room that the shooter has. And as I said, you got to get out, you got to challenge shots. Somebody has to take it upon themselves to make that effort. And right now, Louisville doesn't have a leader on either floor, either side of the floor. Rick at the line for Bahannon, who was the number 27 ranked player last year in our ESPNU 100. You can go to ESPNU.com. They're constantly updating the lists of the best seniors, juniors, and sophomores in high school basketball. A pair of misses at the line for Bahannon. A game that was 18 to 2, Louisville to start. Has been all Marquette since, but now Cadugan loses one out of bounds. And you mentioned before, Bahannon has all six Louisville points in this half, and that's been the problem for Louisville. They've had to rely on one guy, kind of singularly, although in the first half, Chris Smith stepped up to kind of support Russ Smith. But Louisville's got to get the ball popping again. They've got to go inside out. They've got to be able to find open shooters. And they've got to get high percentage shots. Look at the defense right there. Mayo real tight on Chris Smith. Mayo called for the foul, and Big Monday continues with a doubleheader later on tonight. First, at 7.30 in the Big East, Pittsburgh will take on number one Syracuse. Then the day wraps up with another undefeated team in Baylor visiting Kansas. Both games available at ESPN3 and streaming live. Watch ESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. You know, had a chance, even on that foul, Todd Mayo playing a physical brand of defense. And it's really upsetting Louisville throwing them out of rhythm. Gang outside to Chris Smith. Gang lobs one nice underneath. Pass. Great position by Bahannon. Good seal by Bahannon. Excellent delivery by Gang. Cardinals remember playing without Kyle Keurig, their leading scorer, out for the second straight game with a high ankle sprint. Wilson almost turned it over. Instead, it's Johnson Odom in the corner. Rims off a three. Louisville wants to set up something right now. Good exercise of judgment by Steven at the force. Shot clock under 10. Russ Smith, a little shake and bake dribble. Bahannon steps back. Shot clock down to four. Russ Smith might have to force one up. Instead, it's Siva for three in rhythm. He couldn't hit. Strong offensive rebound, though, by Chris Smith. Siva, another chance. Jang the offensive rebound. And he'll have an opportunity at the free throw line. Louisville very fortunate. Again, stout defense by Marquette, forcing the shot clock down. Louisville has a force of 25 footer, but excellent offensive rebound, not only by Chris Smith, but Georgie Jane, who's second in the conference in offensive rebounding behind Kevin Jones of West Virginia, who might be the best offensive rebounder in the country. Another miss at the line, though, for Louisville as Gardner comes back on. Junior Cadugan returns as well as Jamil Wilson and Derek Wilson will both sit down for Marquette. And Gorgie Jang, who speaks five languages. Rick Pitino was saying when he first met him in high school, this is how bright a young man he is, he could basically say hello and goodbye. And that was it. Saw him again two and a half months later. And in two and a half months, 
was speaking passable English. He was fluent inside of six months. We got to get some of our kids who's more fluent in the English <laughs> language. Cut out all the text and in the shortcuts. OMG isn't cutting it for you? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> exactly. Gardner gets the bucket, plus the foul, and the pump fake got Chang to commit. And that's what I was talking about. That big wide body, he gets it point blank. He's got an advantage over the longer, leaner Jang. Take a look at him right there. Use the body very well with the pump fake. And he can use those wide shoulders to keep Jang away from the ball and get the shot off as well as draw the foul. Third foul on Jang. And you're right, Bob. It was the pump fake that got Jang's center of gravity raised. And he was meat then. Three-point play for Gardner. He'll be replaced by Jamil Wilson. Gardner yeah, at 290 pounds, so maybe Buzz Williams trying as we head towards the under-12 timeout to give him just a little bit of a breather. Yeah, I was just going to say, Buzz Williams knows when to get the big fella out to give him a blow. <laughs> you know, that effort offensively, you know, he knew he was winded, so you, you got to give him a blow. You're definitely going to need him down the stretch. And the look lead at, continues to slowly but surely grow for Marquette. And now a near takeaway at midcourt. Johnson Odom raked across the eyes, and it ends up being an easy one for Chris Smith. Boy, I tell you what, Louisville dodged one there as Mahanan just dribbled right into the trap area. And the deflection came up Louisville's way. They 0 for 3. Off the feed from Johnson Odom. And the lead up to double figures for the first time for Marquette. Mahanen slips one inside, an easy two for Jake. Well, again, we talked about the horizontal defense that Marquette plays and trapping and stuff, but if you can get past that first wave, you've got advantage situations, and Louisville that time certainly took advantage. Well, Smith for three. Got it. That's a big shot for the Cardinals. Well, it's a huge shot with Russ Smith making it. And he gets going again, as he did in the beginning of the first half. Timeout called by Buzz Williams. Chris Smith and Russ Smith had both been quiet in the second half before that last sequence. But Russ Smith with the triple, cuts the lead down to five, back in a moment. Live, watch ESPN.com, and the Watch ESPN app tomorrow night. Three comes up short for Mayo. Jane taps it around, keeps it alive, behind him with the loose ball. And a chance for Louisville to make it a one-possession game. Siva to the wing. Smith hits another three. Chris Smith's triple. Cuts the lead down to two. And that was all caused by the defense as Peyton Siva took it upon himself to get out and challenge the perimeter shooter. Something Louisville hadn't done in a long time. Is it me or does it feel like for the first time since it was 18-2 Louisville to start the game, the Cardinals have taken some momentum back? Yeah, they have. It was all about the leadership on both ends of the floor. So much for momentum. A chance for a three-point play for Devontae Gardner as he followed after Jane came over and blocked the drive. He'll have a chance to shoot the bonus when we come back. Well, again, Louisville getting back in the rhythm in transition. And a huge shot by Russ Smith gets him confident again. Louisville loving it. But Marquette right back at you. There's a follow by Devontae Gardner. We got a game, man. Already plenty of surprises this year in the Big East. Certainly Syracuse, Len Elmore, not a very big surprise. Number one in the country. But Cincinnati and Seton Hall, along with Mike Rice's Rutgers team and some of the wins they've had, those have to be three of the bigger surprises in the conference. Yeah, I'd say more than a surprise. You look at Cincinnati in second place. That one loss, buzzer beater by St. John. Seton Hall knocking off Connecticut. I mean, we talk about parity and balance. The Big East has it all. Speaking of surprises, there was one yesterday at Lambeau. <laughs> How'd they get in here? Plus, you don't see any cheese heads, man. Usually when you come here, 
I think, I guess, the, I think the cheese heads <laughs> went back I guess into they, the closet for another year. They put him away to age. Gardner at the free throw line completes the three point play. He checks right back out. Jamil Wilson comes on. And it's a sad day for that guy yesterday. I actually watched the second half of that game yesterday afternoon in a local watering hole, so to speak. And it was like watching the game in the dentist's office. <laughs> I mean, there could not have been a quieter group of fans. They were like st just stunned disbelief watching their offense self destruct at times. Siva to the corner, Bahannon for three. Marquette continues to push the pace. That's how they've gotten open looks, trying to beat that zone back. Crowder forces a three, or so it seems, and knocks it down. Well, just a moment ago, Louisville had cut the lead to two. You talk about balance, Jay Crowder with nine points, threatening to be the fourth. Marquette player to be in double figures as they've dem demonstrated some balance here. Another giveaway, this time by Chris Smith. Mayo swoops in. It's blocked partially. It looked like Deng Mayo got in the piece. And here comes Russ Smith. Then his jumper goes. You talk about no conscience. Russ Smith pulls up at his spot, shoots it. He doesn't care if anybody's rebounding or not. Supreme confidence. Or cut. Reverse won't go for Mayo. Siva outside to Bahannon. The three this time comes up short. The loose ball ends up with Siva though. A lot of contact going after the loose ball as well and no foul call. Seeing Russ Smith's eyes, he didn't necessarily want to give that up. He wanted to beat Darius Johnson Odom off the bounce. That's what you got to do. You got to go inside out. And a soft touch by Jang. That's where the pressure point is for Louisville on offense against this Marquette team. Jang with a size advantage right now with Devontae Gardner out. Got to go inside out, get the big fella some touches, force Marquette's D to shift. Mayo drives the baseline around Jay. No good. Offensive rebound for Crowder. That's knocked away. Crowd looking for a foul call. Here comes Chris Smith. Chris Smith also got away with a little bit of a palm right there. But on both ends, the officials are letting him play. A physical play right there, particularly on the shooter. Now a foul called. This time it's going to go against Chris Smith as Kadugan went flying. Well, I give Todd May an awful lot of credit right there, selling it. But Louisville, once again, if they want to be efficient on offense, you got to give this big fella a chance to touch it. Marquette doesn't have an answer when he gets it inside. Test to them. Kansas virtually unbeatable. Ball Gallon Fieldhouse. I gotta find a way to go to one of those watering holes you talked about while I wait for my flight. <laughs> and check it out. Home run pass as Blue runs under it. Finds Gardner. They have a chance for another three point play. Bahannon called for the foul. The home run pass works to perfection for Marquette. Well, the one thing. When you're pressuring, you got to make sure that you don't get the ball thrown over your head. You got to keep the offensive players in front of you. Otherwise, you get advantage breaks like this and get your big guy in foul trouble. And pardon me, that was Jang with the foul. That's his fourth. Jang's problem was he reached instead of played that vertical defense he normally does. So it's 7.36 to go in the game. Rick Pitino leaves Jang on the floor with four fouls. But I tell you what, if you're going to leave him on the floor, you got to make the most of his presence out there. And against this pressure, the hope for Marquette is you take the big man out of the game. I talked about Marquette not having an answer for Gorgie Jang. He's 4-4 from the field. 
Yeah, he's got to get some touches right now. He's got the advantage. He's also got three assists. Jang spins baseline, has it blocked. But Jamil Wilson knocked it out of bounds. Eight seconds to shoot for Louisville. Rick Pitino's team led 18 to two, six minutes in. Marquette led by four at halftime, though a complete turnaround over the next 14 minutes of the first half. And Marquette has maintained anywhere from a two to a 10 point lead here in the second half. Now I'm not surprised that Marquette came back because when you get that early of the lead, you know, you leave room for that. There is a bailout call for Louisville. A bump by Vander Blue on Russ Smith with three seconds on the shot clock. But to finish my point, I'm surprised that they came back so quick. As Louisville just pretty much disintegrated for the better part of that second half. Steven picks up his dribble. Tried a lean-in wraparound pass to Swapshire, but it was knocked out of bounds, so we'll stay with Louisville. And that's when you talk about Peyton Seaver and his judgment, trying to do a little bit too much. You know, came to Louisville as a combo guard with more of a scorer's mentality, but on this level. Block inside by Crowder on Jang, and it's out of bounds off Jang. Finish my point, on this level, Peyton Siva can't pick the ball up in a mid-range situation. Nice job right there on the block by Jay Crowder. And we mentioned before, Jay Crowder does so many things to this team. He scores, he rebounds, plays defense. With Chris O'Toole out of the lineup, Crowder's got to go to kind of a power forward position. And even though he's undersized, he gets it done. There's Crowder, a chance for another three-point play, waved off. I'll say that Crowder walks before getting the shot off. Infidulity. As Buzz Williams is total disbelief. Let's take a look right here on the drive, the kick in the short corner right there. Yeah, he did travel. Good call. Carl has part of an officiating crew where all three, along with Mike Stewart and Doug Shouse, have Final Four experience. Crowder found it, lost it, traveling called on Swapshire. We'll stay with Parquet. Guys are trying to do too much. You know, you, you heard the adage, be quick but not in a hurry. Well, we're seeing guys hurrying all over the place. And obviously, it's hurting them. Four straight turnovers. These two teams have just combined four with six and a half minutes to go. Dugan left alone, knocks it down. Once Devontae Gardner set that high screen, no one stepped out the hedge or deter the jump shot. And Kadugan smartly takes what the defense gives him. Rick Patino wants a timeout. Take a look right here. There's Devontae Gardner setting it up. He sets up the screen. Who's going to step out? Jared Schwabshire, who's guarding Gardner so far away from him. He can't step out and help. And Kadugan takes the open look. I'm not sure that the modern dance classes here for Marquette are quite accomplishing the job. Let's take a look. Improvisation. And it's just not getting any better. Two teams trying to stay in the top 25. Obviously, the winner will. The loser might go to the unranked. And that, of course, for a Louisville team, if they're not able to hold on this afternoon here at Marquette. At one point, Louisville ranked as high as fourth. They could drop out of the poll altogether. And anyone will tell you, with the injuries they've had, with some of the difficulties they've had, with their lack of depth, they were far overrated. Off the scramble, Siva misses a wide open three as Jane kept it alive. A nice block though inside again by Jake Crowder. Hey, 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 
Once again, the high screen looking to try to get some opportunities against this 2 3 zone. Jumping over the top to get the steal is Kadugan. That's just poorly executed pass right there. It looked like Swapshire had a seal inside. Crowder keeps it alive. Johnson Odom from the corner. Knocked out of bounds off of Siva. Again Crowder at both ends doing a lot to help Marquette. I'll tell you what, Siva, talk about help, is looking for some help right now. Battling on a rebound against Jay Crowder. Siva is at a major disadvantage. Kevin Ware comes back on, replacing Peyton Siva. Crowder steps into a three. And Jang the rebound. Are you kidding me, man? Opportunity to build a lead. You can't settle for that. Ross Smith, too strong. Offensive foul, I believe. And it's Crowder again who steps in and takes the charge. And the official, when he gave the call, it was just nonchalant. Matter of fact, actually, Jay Crowder slid, and he also looked like he had his heel on that restricted area line. Which, if that was the case, that should have been a block and not a charge. Second foul on Russ Smith. But the nonchalant call let Russ Smith know, you got to be kidding me, man. You know that's an offensive foul. Johnson Odom comes up short. Bang fights for the rebound with Ware. Instead, it's Ware. He tries to go coast to coast, and he draws the foul. Bumped by Johnson Odom. So Kevin Ware, a freshman from Georgia, who originally signed with Tennessee, but then when Bruce Pearl was let go, asked out, was released, and ends up going to Louisville to play for Rick Pitino to shoot a couple at the line. He only averages 1.5 points per game. But again, Rick Pitino trying to find some help off the bench. Because right now, that is probably the first point of anybody from the bench for Louisville. Two with the line for the New York native, Kevin Ware. Eight-point lead for Marquette. Blue shovels off to Johnson Odom, and he's fouled on the way up. Kevin Ware called for the foul again. That's his first. One thing you got to like about Marquette and their offense is sometimes it bogs down, but they're never at a loss for cutters and guys trying to get themselves open. And so sometimes when it seems that they've been thwarted by the defense, all of a sudden the guy's making a cut to the basket, like Darius Johnson Odom did that time, and kind of helps bail out the offense. Neil Wilson comes back on replacing Gardner for Marquette. Marquette is now 13 for 13 at the free throw line today. And that was a fear Rick Pitino had. Didn't want Marquette to have an advantage on the free throw line as they have in the last two meetings. But Marquette very aggressive going to the basket, whether it's off the bounce or offensive rebounds. Ware from the corner for three. Nice block out underneath by Jamil Wilson. Walled off Jang. Under four minutes to go. Jang pokes it away Are and they'll call kidding? a foul. And that'll be number five. That is a tough way to foul out. Boy, I don't know. That was really close. Looked like Jang had good footwork getting around and deflecting that.
Well, you be the judge. This is a knockaway inside and a good defensive play, or is this worthy of being the fifth foul on Gordy Jang? Uh, that to me, you got to let him play. They've been letting him play all game. Jang is a victim on that one. Brent, thanks very much. It's Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Continuing here in Milwaukee. Louisville led by 16 points, six minutes into the first half. But Darius Johnson, Odom, and Marquette have basically dominated ever since. It's been a 26-point turnaround since the first six minutes. And with under three minutes to go, Crowder at the line looking to extend a 10-point lead for Marquette. Bob Wischusen and Len Elmore after what was a questionable call on Gorgie Jang. Offensive work, though, done on the glass by Jamil Wilson, and a missed free throw turns into two. Swapshire quickly the other way. Jump hook rolls home for Louisville. I was going to say with the loss of Gorgie Jang, Louisville cannot, if they have any hopes of coming back, can't turn themselves into merely a perimeter team. Got to find some guys inside, force Marquette to collapse their defense, go inside out. But shots like that, man, that's not going to get you anywhere. A couple of steals, though, and here's Smith leaning in, blocked by Crowder. Recovered by Ware, a scramble now. The shot clock wasn't running, and it ends up with Kadugan on the rebound. And now a foul call, it looks like, against Russ Smith. Now, remember last year, one of the most amazing, if not the most amazing, comeback in college basketball took place when these two teams met in Louisville. The only meeting during the season last year between Louisville and Marquette. Louisville was down by 18 with 5.44 to go. And they would end up winning the game 71-70. to The only problem, at least for Louisville, was the key shots, for the most part, were made by Preston Knowles. Well, they don't have Preston Knowles to go to anymore. As they came from 18 down inside of the last five and a half minutes to turn things around. And also, the game winner in the that contest was hit by Kyle Keurig, and he, with a high ankle sprain, missing his second consecutive game. So, if Louisville is going to pull off a come-from-behind win today, it's going to have to be a whole new cast of characters, for the most part, making the big play. Well, I'll tell you what, again, Marquette susceptible. You would hope that they'd have amnesia. They blew a 17-point lead against Georgetown. But once again, Louisville's got to go inside out, even though James not in the ball game. They're not forcing the Marquette defense to really move. Chris Smith's miss. Gives it back to Marquette with 2.45 remaining. Crowder throws it away. Smith steps in and gets the steal. Forces a pass, though, to Russ Smith. Another turnover for Louisville. Here's Crowder ahead of the field. Shire. No good. Johnson Odom the rebound. And here comes Marquette in transition again. Kadugan will go to the free throw line. Boy, off of misses. Up by 13 with two minutes to go. Buzz Williams' team isn't slowing down at all. And, and they shouldn't. You know, obviously when you have opportunities to press the metal down, or press the pedal down, you've really got to go after it. There's no back off in Buzz Williams. I don't really recall ever seeing him back his team out. You got to maintain the aggressiveness if you're Marquette against a Louisville team that, you know, starting to self-destruct. Every time they get an opportunity off a of Marquette turnover in the last couple of possessions, they've done everything they could to give it back. Ware and Swapshire sit down. Peyton Siva comes back on for Louisville. Can they make a push inside of the last two minutes? A 31-point swing in this game since it was 18-2 Louisville. And that was through the first six minutes. And during that time, Louisville relied on Russ Smith and Chris Smith. Marquette has kind of put the clamps on them. 
Nice move inside by Chamber Hannon. And it's forced other guys to have to emerge for Louisville. And for the most part, no one has. But Hannon, for a period of time, has gotten it done. Still a double-digit lead. And Louisville not opting to foul. The Dugan will dribble it down. Now he attacks. Crowder for three. Here's some icing on the cake for Marquette. Oh, that's a backbreaker, no question about it. Timeout called by Rick Pitino. This is just the start of Big Monday. Three more games to come. And we'll cap the night with a doubleheader beginning in the Big East at 7.30 as Syracuse looks to stay undefeated, taking on Pittsburgh. And the day wraps up with another undefeated team, the Baylor Bears, going to Fog Allen to take on Kansas. Both of those games available. ESPN3, streaming live, watchespn.com, and the Watch ESPN app, and Dion Waiters is the sixth man for Syracuse and might be their best player. Yeah, and coming off the bench. You know, what happens is you bring a six man off the bench, you bring somebody who's better than the guy that's on the floor, force the other team to adjust. And I don't think anybody's adjusted to Deion Waiters this year as reflected by Syracuse's record and his effectiveness. A technical foul was called on Jay Crowder. Apparently a taunting gesture after the three made by Crowder results in a T. So Chris Smith misses badly, a 75% free throw shooter. And a game that certainly is decided at this point, but no reason for Jay Crowder. Well, I mean, look, Jay Crowder is about to come to a double-double. That is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, you know, what's the need for that kind of demonstration? All you got to do is point to the scoreboard, okay? Russ Smith off the window. And under a minute to go. Well, for Louisville, once again, a lack of balance in scoring. You know, poor utilization of the big fella, Gorgie Jane, who for the most part had his way inside until he fouled out. Just didn't get enough touches. But give Marquette an awful lot of credit. They didn't wilt going down 16. In fact, it seemed to energize him. Down to the last 30 seconds. Smith again on the drive. Chris Smith, an offensive rebound, able to score inside. But Russ Smith and Chris Smith not nearly the factor in the second half, but they were in the first and got very little support from their teammates, unfortunately. As those two have done their best to carry Louisville, as Russ Smith has 18, Chris Smith has 16, and no other player has been a huge factor for the Cardinals. Well, it's now Russ Smith up to 20. Marquette maintains home court advantage, which you have to do in this conference because of the competitiveness. And this is not one of those two road wins that Rick Pitino is looking for. Back to the drawing board. Third straight Big East win for Marquette and improves them to four and two in the conference. And Louisville, they've now lost five of their last seven. And they dropped two games below 500 in the Big East as Marquette trailing 18 to two in the first six minutes comes from behind to win by double digits. Coming up next, Texas A&M and Missouri. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Darius Johnson Odom again paces Marquette. Four players in double figures, though, for the Golden Eagles, and they win it by 11 at home over Louisville. Let's go to Carl Rabbit, Hubert Davis, and Digger Phelps now in the studio. Guys.